Thank you, Miles, and uh, uh, thanks especially to all uh, three uh, organizers uh, of this uh, uh, really nice uh, uh, series of uh, seminars. I would like to discuss some joint works with uh, Francesca De Marquis uh, from Rome, Olivier Drouet, uh, and Pierre Pimentesi from Lyon, and Luca Martinazzi from, uh, uh, from Padua. And this is about the moser tuninger uh, functional. So let me recall some uh, uh, basic facts um, about the moser tuninger inequality. Okay, so we'll uh, stay all the time in, uh, in two dimensions. And let me start with, a, with an open bounded set omega uh, over two. Okay, so we know that uh, the Sobolev space W120 of omega embeds uh, into any LP, but not uh, uh, in an infinity, so almost in, in an infinity. Uh, but it was proved by Tudinger um, that uh, if u is in w1 to 0, then actually e to the u squared is uh, in L1. Uh, and then four years later, uh, in, uh, in 1971, Moser proved the sharp uh, inequality. So he proved that uh, whenever the L2 norm of the gradient of u is bounded by 4 pi, uh, then uh, the integral of e to the u squared is bound by a constant that depends only on omega. So this upper bound on the gradient squared, uh, 4 pi is sharp. And in fact, uh, if you take the supremum uh, over functions uh, whose, whose uh, L2 squared norm uh, is less than lambda for lambda greater than 4 pi, then the supremum becomes uh, infinite. Um, so there are actually uh, some lots of applications of the moser tuninger inequality, um, especially in the study of, uh, of Louvil equations. So Louvil equations are elliptic of the type uh, Laplace u equal to e to the u, and uh, they have a, a really prominent role in conformal geometry, mathematical physics, and spectral theory. So I, I wrote here some references, so three books by Oban, Dune, and Tarantello. So the first in, is in geometry, the other two in uh, mathematical physics, and then uh, two papers uh, by Osgood, Phyllis, and Sarnak uh, uh, to see some applications in, uh, in spectral theory. But I will focus uh, on uh, the more uh, PDE analytical side of the, of the problem. Okay, so let's uh, discuss the existence of uh, maximizers. So I consider the functional f of u, the integral of uh, e to the u squared on omega, uh, constrained uh, to this uh, manifold uh, in the Sobolev space. So they are functions whose uh, L2 norm squared is equal to a given lambda. So constrain the critical points of f, uh, so constrained to a lambda solved uh, this uh, PD, where lambda is a Lagrange multiplier determined by the original capital lambda given the constraint. So the Lagrange multiplier depends on the solution U itself. In a paper, uh, in a basic paper by Carlson and Chang in 1986, so it was proved that uh, the supremum is attained even for lambda equal to four pi. So when you are in the borderline case, then f attains uh, a supremum constrained to a uh, norm of uh, remnant of u squared in L2 uh, equal to 4 pi. Okay, so they use the sort of a contradiction arguments. Uh, so assuming that uh, the supremum is not, uh, is not attained, so they prove uh, that uh, f uh, has to be uh, less or equal than some threshold, uh, but then uh, they uh, used uh, some sort of test uh, function uh, comparison uh, to prove uh, that uh, the a sequence of, uh, uh, say, maximizers does not uh, blow up. Um, and then uh, uh, I want to mention some result by Struve in 1988. So he proved a sort of uh, stability result. So you can imagine that uh, when, uh, so Carlson and Chang studied the radial case in the unit disk, so in this case, the function uh, f has a sort of a maximizer and uh, Struve proved a sort of stability property. I'm trying to make it simple. So he proved that uh, when you have uh, a domain which is uh, uh, a perturbation of, uh, of the disk, uh, sort of close enough uh, to the disk, or values of lambda of the constraint that are slightly higher, this local maximum uh, sort of is stable, it persists. And then uh, you still uh, can achieve uh, uh, a local maximum. 
And the proof, uh, uh, I'm actually making it simple, but uh, it uses some uh, concentration compactness uh, argument. And then Fluger in uh, 1992 proved that uh, the supremum is attained for general domains. So he used uh, substantially the isoperimetric inequality and uh, the concept of uh, conformal radius of uh, or uh, Robin function. So to extend uh, the estimates in Carlson and Chang uh, to the non-radial uh, setting. So the question I would like to address today is uh, how far can you go beyond uh, four pi to find uh, constrained uh, critical points? Okay, so let's uh, look at the radial case. Um, a few years ago with uh, Luca Martinazzi, we proved the following uh, result. Okay, so we are uh, in, the, in the unit disk. Then uh, we could prove that there exists uh, some uh, threshold value, lambda sharp, greater than four pi, such that the constrained functional has no critical points if uh, lambda is larger than this threshold value lambda sharp. At least uh, two critical points if lambda is uh, in between uh, four pi and lambda sharp, and at least uh, one critical point for lambda in uh, zero four pi union uh, lambda sharp. So the possible scenarios uh, of uh, the solutions are the following. So in uh, uh, over the horizontal axis, uh, I draw the parameter lambda. And then uh, uh, in the vertical axis, you can imagine it to be like the L infinity norm uh, of, uh, of solutions. Okay, so we know that uh, uh, between uh, four pi and lambda sharp, you can find at least uh, all these two solutions uh, while uh, you have at least uh, one solution uh, on, uh, on the left. And then there is another fact. So this result was for the, for the unit disk. Uh, on the other hand, on annuli, so on a symmetric annuli, uh, in fact, the constrained functional has uh, critical points for all values of, uh, of lambda. Okay, then there were also results uh, concerning critical points of uh, non-maximal type. Okay, so imagine to draw a sort of graph uh, of uh, F over the constraints. Okay, so the situation is the following. So we know that uh, by the results uh, of Carlson, Chang, uh, uh, Struve, and Fluker, that uh, there is always a, a global maximum for f when lambda is equal to four pi. Okay, then uh, we increase a little the value of lambda, so the local maximum persists, but the functional is uh, unbounded from above. Okay, so we get this local maximum, and then uh, uh, we lose the uh, upper bounds on f on the constraint. And this suggests to try to use a sort of reverse uh, mountain pass scheme uh, to try to find the saddle point uh, here. Okay, so this actually works. Uh, so if you take any smooth uh, bounded domain, you can find uh, an epsilon positive such that if lambda is between four pi and four pi plus epsilon, then uh, the constraint function has at least uh, two distinct uh, critical points one local maximum and uh, one uh, uh, reverse the uh, saddle point. Okay, um, in general, so you have uh, this uh, local maximum only when lambda is close to four pi, but when lambda increases, uh, this might uh, disappear. Okay, so what uh, can you do? Um, there were other solutions uh, constructed for values of lambda uh, close, than, close to eight pi. So I would like to mention a, a result by Del Pino, uh, Monica, and uh, Ruth from 2012. So they considered uh, non semi connected domains in R2, and they showed that uh, there exists, uh, again, an epsilon positive, such that if lambda is between now 8 pi and 8 pi plus epsilon, then uh, uh, the problem, the constraint problem, has at least uh, one critical point. And they actually construct uh, almost uh, by hand uh, solutions via some so sophisticated implicit function theorem. They construct solutions with two peaks, and uh, when epsilon goes to zero, these two peaks uh, uh, blow up in the domain. And they can locate precisely the concentration points of, uh, of the solutions. Uh, in the symmetric case, so for round uh, annuli, so uh, we just saw that uh, there are uh, radial solutions, but they also constructed solutions with k peaks. Uh, with k, uh, an arbitrary integer. 
And this, these results suggest that uh, some found topology of the domain should play a role uh, in the existence of critical points. Because I recall uh, when uh, we are in the unit disk, there is a threshold value for existence. So for lambda greater than some lambda sharp, there's no existence anymore. While these other results uh, always worked uh, for domains with non-trivial uh, topology. Okay, so let me try to understand what is the somehow the picture of the function, how f should look like uh, on, a, on a general domain when the lambda is greater than 4 pi. So can you still uh, understand the sort of uh, settle point uh, structure, which is quite uh, robust? And uh, in fact, uh, we can. And this relies on uh, some improved uh, moser tudinger inequalities. So this is a tool that, in fact, uh, will uh, exploit uh, topology. I will try to give you an idea uh, of uh, how this works. In fact, uh, the moser tudinger constant uh, uh, can uh, be improved uh, under some uh, circumstances. So let me try to explain uh, some well-known uh, cases. So I don't state precise results because uh, now, because I will do it uh, later. But let me mention some results by Moser. So he was dealing with, uh, uh, again, an exponential type inequality. And he proved uh, that if you are in the round uh, sphere, and if you consider now functions that are antipodally symmetric, so u of x is equal to u of minus x for any point x uh, on the round sphere, then uh, the moser tudinger inequality improves. And, and then Oben in uh, 1976, so three years later, he extended this improvement for functions whose uh, exponential has center of mass at the origin of R3. So I'm embedding the round sphere S2 into R3. And then I consider the exponential function e to the, say, u, for example. And I consider the center of mass in R3 of uh, this uh, distribution. And if it is at the origin, then uh, we see an improvement uh, of the moser tudinger constant. So uh, if I want to compare the two results, of course, the Moser's uh, is, uh, I mean, gives you some intuition, but it's very special because it's an infinite dimensional constraint, while uh, Oban's constraint is just a three dimensional constraint. So you look at the position of the center of mass of the exponential function. So that can be in a, a three dimensional space if it sits exactly at the origin, so we have a three-dimensional constraint, then there is an improvement uh, of, uh, of the inequality. So this is a, a finite dimensional constraint. This is very important. And this can, be, can indeed always be achieved if you compose uh, the exponential function with a suitable Möbius map. So the Möbius group uh, is a, a non-compact uh, group of conformal maps on uh, S2 into itself. And if you play with Möbius maps, uh, you can move around uh, the center of mass of the exponential function. So by composing uh, with a proper Möbius map, you can always uh, achieve this uh, center of mass uh, at, uh, at the origin. And then uh, you get the improved inequality. So this was very useful in studying problems like the description of uh, scalar curvature on, uh, or Gaussian curvature on, uh, on spheres. Okay, what is the general principle uh, which lies uh, beneath these uh, uh, improvements of the constants? Uh, it is about uh, sort of spreading uh, of the exponential function. So I'm drawing a, a domain, any domain omega, and I'm assuming that the exponential function is sort of split into at least the two sort of bumps. So you can separate the mass into two distinct sets. And here's the proposition. So after, uh, the two results we saw before by Moser Oban and uh, another result by Chen Li from 91. Okay, in Omega, consider two sets, S1, S2, whose distance is greater than some fixed uh, delta positive and uh, fix another constant uh, gamma positive. And now I assume that uh, each of the sets uh, SI, so both S1 and S2, contain a gamma portion of the whole integral of the exponential function. Okay, so I'm sort of separating quantitatively the, uh, the mass of uh, e to the u squared. Okay, so then the statement is the following. So you fix epsilon and then you find a constant that depends only on epsilon, delta, and gamma, but not on u satisfying these conditions. 
such that uh, you get uh, a uniform bound uh, on the integral of e to the u squared whenever the gradient uh, of u squared uh, is less or equal than a pi minus epsilon. Okay, there may be many typos in my slides, but not uh, here. Okay, so we saw that uh, the moser trudinger inequality implies an upper bound uh, on e to the u squared in general, provided uh, the gradient of u squared uh, in L, uh, the gradient of u squared in L1 is bounded by 4 pi, but if you can split uh, the exponential function as in this picture, then you can reach uh, almost uh, a pi. So for the L2 norm squared uh, of the gradient, okay? Not a type. So uh, the meaning is that you can improve uh, the moser trudinger constant from a pi, from four pi to almost uh, a pi. So the proof uses some localization arguments. Uh, so we are, cutoff functions uh, and uh, some free analysis to get rid of the effects of, uh, of the cutoff functions. So it's a bit technical, but not so uh, difficult uh, conceptually. Okay, so what can you say uh, then? So when uh, lambda is greater than four pi, okay? So we will see that, uh, uh, okay, we know that uh, if lambda is greater than four pi, you can lose uh, upper bounds uh, on F, uh, but if this happens, uh, this will imply a sort of concentration property of the exponential function. So let me try to be precise, okay? So I want to characterize uh, high values uh, of the constrained uh, functional f. If, for example, lambda between, lies between 4 pi and uh, 8 pi. Okay, we saw before that uh, if uh, the exponential function is sort of spread around the domain, you get an improvement in the moser trudinger constant, and an improvement gives you an upper bound uh, on the energy. So what happens if the upper bound uh, fails? It means that you did not improve uh, in the moser trudinger constant, and that means that uh, the exponential function was indeed no, not uh, spreading. But if it is not spreading, uh, it must uh, then concentrate. And then you recover this uh, consequence, so suppose that uh, the parameter lambda lies between four pi and uh, eight pi. So you fix two small constants, epsilon and r, then you can find the value L so that if uh, f of u becomes larger than this L, then you can find a single point which, con which contains almost all the integral of the exponential function. So only an epsilon fraction of the exponential function lies outside of the small ball that you fixed. Okay, it means that uh, if lambda is between four pi and eight pi, and if uh, f of u is large, well, it can be large, of course, but if it, la if it is large, then the exponential function has to concentrate at a single point uh, in the domain. And you can make it uh, quantitative by means of, uh, of this lemma. Okay, so you can follow somehow the center of mass of the exponential function. Now, suppose we have some uh, uh, non-trivial topology. Suppose for simplicity that omega is an annulus and that lambda is in this range, 4 pi, 8 pi. Okay, so recall that I call uh, uh, m lambda the, the constraint and already I found the typo, so there should be a squared uh, here. So gradient of u squared is equal to lambda. Okay, so with the above reasoning, uh, we obtain a natural continuous map from uh, large levels of the functional f into omega. I call this map uh, psi. Okay, I just follow the center of mass of uh, the exponential function. Okay, so I said before that uh, if the energy f is large, if lambda is in this range, four pi, eight pi, all the exponential function is concentrating uh, at a single point, okay? And uh, if uh, omega is an annulus, for example, then, uh, okay, it is not convex, uh, but the center of mass of a concentrated function will be very close to omega. Okay, so it will be a point uh, in L2, very close to omega. So I can sort of project uh, from large values of f into the domain uh, itself. And I call this map uh, psi. Okay, just the center of mass of the exponential function. Okay, so it means that we get a result similar to Oban's. Okay, so he proved that if 
the center of mass on the round S2 is at the origin of R3. Then you improve uh, the Moser Tudinger inequality. Uh, similarly, we prove that if uh, the center of mass of the exponential function is at the origin of R2, then uh, the exponential function cannot be concentrated near a single point in omega, and therefore the functional f, the constraint function, must be upper bounded. Okay, so if the center of mass is at the origin, then you get uniform upper bounds uh, on f. Okay, uh, this description I want to show is kind of uh, optimal. So describing uh, high energy levels in terms of uh, functions concentrated at a single point, and you can actually go the other way around. Okay, so I can map uh, now. So we mapped uh, functions uh, with large values of f into omega, and now I want to map uh, omega into functions uh, with large values. So this we can do using uh, suitable test uh, functions. So let's take again lambda between 4 pi and 8 pi. Now I take uh, a non contractible circle uh, C inside omega. So it's going around the origin. Suppose that uh, uh, zero is in the inner uh, complement of omega. Okay. So for any point in C, so in this non contractible circle, I can construct uh, uh, a test function uh, phi lambda x, uh, which is in the constraint, with these properties. So first, uh, the energy is going to plus infinity. And second, uh, the exponential function is behaving like Dirac delta, like a Dirac delta at the given point x uh, when lambda goes to infinity. OK, so this is the picture. So I construct a circle, C, non-contractible in omega. And to any point uh, of C, I associate a test function uh, looking like this with very large uh, energy. OK, uh, so when uh, the energy of this function uh, is large, we are in the domain of the previous map uh, psi. So from points of C, we go into large values uh, of the functional. And then by the previous results, we can map inside the domain omega. OK, and uh, the center of mass uh, of this function phi lambda x will be very close to x. So what we obtain is a continuous map from the circle C in itself, which is a homotopic to the identity. So when lambda goes to infinity, it actually converges uh, to the identity. Okay, so now we can uh, run a, a sort of min max uh, scheme. Uh, now I do the following. So I consider this non contractible circle C in omega, and I complete it uh, to a disk uh, when I, which I colored here. So I call D, uh, script D the disk. And I consider now a map. So I extend uh, basically the previous uh, test functions, which were defined only on C. I extend the map uh, sort of inside the disk. So I consider any map from uh, which I call theta from the disk into the constraint, which coincides with the previous test functions uh, on the boundary of the disk. So which is the circle uh, C. Now, in this extension, just by, say, continuity by degree theory, we will find uh, some element z in the disk uh, such that the center of mass of the exponential function uh, will be at the origin of R2. So this is because uh, on the boundary of D, so on the curve C, the center of mass is kind of equal uh, to the identity on C. Okay, so in between, the center of mass uh, must be at the origin of R2. But we also know by the previous result that if the center of mass uh, at, uh, is at the origin, then the energy becomes uh, uniformly upper bounded. Okay? So therefore, the picture on the disk is like this. So when we are at the boundary of the disk, the values are very large. And uh, somewhere in the middle of the disk, uh, then uh, we are uh, bounded from above. Okay, so this is another situation in which you can run uh, uh, a two-dimensional uh, reversed uh, min-max uh, scheme. So instead of running a, a classical, uh, say, mountain pass uh, argument, you need to use uh, a two-dimensional uh, reversed uh, min-max uh, scheme. Okay, so this gives you an idea of the geometry of uh, the functional on an analysis uh, when lambda is between 4 pi and uh, 8 pi. 
And uh, so using these uh, arguments, uh, we got uh, uh, this result. So let me state it on compact surfaces uh, where you can use actually similar ideas. So the result uh, is the following. Uh, so that's a uh, work in progress with, uh, with my co-authors. So I consider any compact uh, closed surface sigma with a metric G and any lambda positive. Then considering the previous uh, functional F, so we have uh, always a constrained uh, critical point to the set of functions whose uh, square norm in W12 is equal to lambda. I call this constraint uh, on surfaces rather than domains M lambda tilde. And here I need to include uh, the L2 norm, otherwise uh, uh, it would not be a norm. So just the uh, just the norm would not be a norm on, uh, on a closed surface. Uh, so I just mentioned uh, previously the geometry of the function when lambda is between uh, 4 pi and 8 pi. Um, for general lambdas, we use uh, actually a more involved than min-max uh, scheme. But instead of uh, a single concentration point, actually you can allow multiple uh, concentration points. And how many depends uh, on uh, where lambda lies uh, on the real line. So basically you count uh, how much, uh, uh, how many times it crosses the multiples of, uh, of four pi. Um, we have actually a similar result uh, for domains uh, over two, but I will state it later together with another uh, uh, result. So let me try to give you an idea uh, about the proof. In fact, uh, I kind of uh, cheated a little uh, because um, you need, uh, so to derive existence from a min-max scheme, uh, you need uh, some kind of compactness uh, condition. And in general, if you run a min-max uh, scheme, uh, you don't get a solution directly, but rather a palace mail sequence. So palace mail sequence is a sequence of uh, approximate critical points. It means that the energies are converging and that uh, the gradients uh, in the functional space are uh, converging weakly to zero. So uh, it's a sort of a sequence of approximate uh, critical points. Uh, the issue is uh, that uh, in general, the palace mail condition does not uh, hold. So it holds uh, by sort of modifying arguments uh, by Adimurti and Adimurti's sugar only when lambda is less than four pi, but it actually fails for larger values of lambda as uh, it was shown by Costa and uh, Dintar uh, rather recently. So in general, uh, it is better actually to study, so this is a metal principle, meta principle. So it is better to study exact solutions of uh, approximate equations rather than uh, approximate solutions of your original equation. Because, so it's better maybe to introduce some perturbation in the equation and solve it exactly rather than finding uh, approximate solutions. Because in this way you have kind of uh, a little more uh, rigidity, let me say. Okay, so the strategy we use is to actually lower the exponent in the Moser to integer functional. So we don't solve, uh, I consider basically the same euler lagrange equation that we saw before, but I substitute the exponent uh, two with an exponent t less than two. So to gain a little more uh, compactness, okay? And uh, I still study a sort of constrained uh, uh, problem. I'm simplifying a little bit, but that's what, or less, what more or less we do. Okay, so then I try to solve for a, for a lower exponent, hoping in some more compactness, and then I try to pass to the limits for the exponent converging to two. Okay, so what can we say about uh, this uh, approximate equation, so, which is uh, a little uh, um, milder, let me say. In fact, uh, it is not known whether the palace main condition holds uh, for the corresponding uh, order functional, okay? Uh, it would be standard to have a uh, compactness of palace mail sequences if they were bounded, but it is not known in general. So we use uh, here then uh, a monotonicity argument used by, by Struve, uh, which is a sort of uh, entropy method. So you, you introduce an extra parameter in the problem, and then you select uh, somehow the best values uh, of this parameter in order to gain uh, some, uh, some compactness. So this was used uh, successfully in the study of several problems uh, like minimal or constant mean curvature surfaces, 
Harmonic maps, uh, and uh, especially Nubili equations, I will not say much. Uh, so we introduce an extra parameter, so which is uh, basically the value of the constraint uh, lambda. Okay, so I write uh, this uh, rather horrible function that, uh, that we use that depends uh, on the exponent p and uh, the constraint uh, lambda. And uh, using this monotonicity argument by Struve, we're able to find the uh, critical points uh, for almost every value of the parameter lambda. So basically, we fix uh, a parameter lambda, and then we're able to find uh, a sequence uh, lambda k and a sequence of uh, constrained uh, functions to, in a slightly different constraint, in n tilde lambda k, which would solve uh, the uh, constrained uh, Euler Lagrange uh, equation. So the next goal would be to understand whether we can get convergence uh, or not. Okay, this uses some uh, uh, blow up analysis. So this is, uh, this was noticed uh, uh, by Struve. Okay, so suppose that you have a sequence of solutions of that equation that blows up. So the supremum uh, goes to plus infinity. Then you can hope to sort of rescale them in order to obtain some kind of uh, limit uh, profile. Okay. So here the rescaling is a bit uh, uh, not uh, obvious. So I define uh, the a radius uh, rk in this way. So uh, mu k is the maximal value of uk, which is going to plus infinity. So I define rk by this formula that's going to zero. And I define some rescaled functions uh, eta k, which by construction are bounded from above. Okay, then you write down uh, an equation or approximate equation satisfies, satisfied by the eta case. And uh, you show that this converges to a sort of Lewis equation. So they would converge uh, to a function satisfying in the whole plane the Lewis equation with uh, a uniform bound on the integral of the exponential. So such solutions were classified by Chen and Lee in 91 as uh, what people call uh, bubbles uh, because they have uh, uh, some motivation from conformal geometry. Okay, so they are functions that decay logarithmically uh, at infinity. And that's a profile you obtain of uh, blowing up solutions uh, after rescaling. And you can check that uh, on uh, a suitable, suitably small uh, scale, the gradient squared behaves like a Dirac delta multiplied by 4 pi. But you want to understand what happens at larger scales. And in fact, uh, so there are some results uh, about uh, uh, quantization. So there is a theorem uh, proved by Drouet in uh, 2006 and Young in 2015. So the first uh, result is in domains and the other on the compact surfaces. So they consider the sequences of uh, solutions uh, of uh, the constrained uh, Euler-Lagrange equations with p equal to two, with uniformly bounded uh, norm. And then they could prove uh, that the gradient squared converges uh, to the gradient squared of the weak limit, so c infinity, uh, plus an integer multiple of uh, four pi, which could be uh, possibly zero, okay, in case you have strong convergence. But if you have blow up, then uh, there is this kind of uh, quantization. So basically the gradient squared splits into the gradient squared of the weak limits and uh, into sort of K bubbles. So the, there is also a parabolic version by Lama, Robert and, uh, and Struve in 2009. Uh, but later this analysis was uh, pushed uh, by Drouet and PZ. And uh, in fact, uh, so Luca Martinazzi and I proved it uh, in the radial case, which is much simpler. In fact, you can prove uh, that the weak limits, if there is blow up, has to be zero. Okay, so the consequence is that uh, if uh, you are constrained uh, on a value, which is not a multiple of four pi, then uh, there are no bubbles, okay? So no bubbling can occur and you have compactness uh, of solutions. So all solutions have to stay uniformly bounded. So in, in this recent work, with, which I'm describing, we actually extended this compactness for all values of P between one uh, uh, and two. 
Okay, uh, so this allowed uh, to solve uh, for uh, the, I mean, to find constraint critical points when lambda was not a multiple of four pi because of this compactness theorem. So what happens uh, when the lambda is indeed a multiple of four pi? Okay, in general, you do expect uh, solutions to blow up because uh, they do in the paper by Delpino, Musso, and Roof. So uh, in this result, I mentioned the uh, the Dirichlet energy, so the L2 norm squared of the gradient converges to a pi. So in general, you do expect uh, uh, blow up uh, of solutions. But there is a catch. So it was noticed uh, a few years ago uh, by uh, Mancini and uh, Martinazzi that uh, in the radial case, so if you are on the unit disk, so you cannot blow up, but this ha only happens uh, from the right uh, side. So not uh, when lambda converges to four pi from the left. So this is uh, more or less the situation you would expect uh, in the radial case. So I'm still drawing uh, lambda on the horizontal axis and uh, in the vertical axis, the L infinity norm of, uh, of solutions. So we were able actually to prove this property also in the non-radial setting. Uh, so for this uh, uh, Euler-Lagrange uh, equation, uh, whenever the exponent uh, is in the interval one and two with uh, the value one uh, excluded. So somehow this estimate uh, kind of degenerates when P approaches one. And in fact, the result is false in general when P is equal to one. So there is a paper where, there, where Chen and Lin in 2002 did uh, a very refined uh, blow up analysis of the equation. And they gave uh, conditions uh, to understand whether you have blow up uh, on the left uh, or on the right uh, side. But uh, if P, this exponent P is larger than one, then it only happens uh, uh, from the right side. Okay, so uh, then we conclude uh, uh, the proof. Uh, so if now lambda is uh, a multiple of uh, four pi, uh, we know that we cannot have a blow up uh, from the left. So we consider a sequence lambda K equal to lambda minus one over K. So this is not a multiple of four pi. We solved uh, for uh, this constraint, m lambda k, and then we passed the limit. So if the limit uh, happens from the left, we have compactness and we can conclude uh, uh, existence of uh, solutions for all values uh, of lambda. So the global picture of solutions is something like this. Uh, so this is very uh, crude, of course. So uh, again, there is lambda on the uh, horizontal axis, the N infinity norm of U on the vertical axis. So for every value of lambda, we have uh, uh, solutions, so constrained critical points. And uh, as you see, uh, blow up only happens uh, from the right side when lambda is a multiple of uh, four pi. So four pi, eight pi, 12 pi, uh, and so on. But on the other hand, we have compactness uh, of solutions. So whenever lambda belongs to any fixed set of R minus uh, the multiples of uh, four pi. So if you are, uh, say, strictly inside uh, one of these intervals, then solutions are actually uniformly upper bounded. Okay, so this allows you to actually define uh, uh, a degree. So you, because of uh, this compactness uh, of solutions, you can define uh, this compact operator T lambda, which is basically inverting uh, just the Laplacian uh, on, the, on the right hand side. Okay, and uh, you can define on a proper set, which I will not uh, uh, write, the layer the degree of uh, all solutions. So you take the layer the degree of the identity plus uh, T lambda, which is a compact uh, operator. So the quantization result that I mentioned implies that uh, the ratio of the degree is well-defined whenever lambda is not uh, a multiple of, uh, of four pi. And this degree is actually a number that we can uh, compute uh, in another paper in, uh, in progress, okay? And this degree depends uh, on uh, somehow where lambda sits on the real axis. So if lambda is not a multiple of four pi, it will lie between uh, in some interval uh, with extrema four pi n, four pi n plus one, okay? And in this case, the degree of the equation is equal to this number. So one minus uh, Euler characteristic of omega 
times two minus all the characteristic of omega, da, 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 times n minus all the characteristic of omega divided by n factorial. Okay, you can prove that this number is actually uh, an integer, okay, as it should be. And this result is a counterpart of uh, results on the uh, Liouville equations. Uh, so the study was initiated by Yan Yan Li in 1999 and then concluded by Sun and Lin in 2003. So you see that uh, when uh, the domain is contractible, eventually the degree becomes uh, zero whenever lambda is greater than four pi. But whenever the, degree, the domain has some topology, the degree is never zero. So we expect that the similar, we didn't work it out, but we expect that the similar formula would hold uh, on uh, compact surfaces. And uh, you can see that for the sphere, where, for which the other characteristic is equal to two, uh, the degree for lambda large eventually is zero. So that's why we had to use uh, that other min-max uh, scheme, which uh, exploits uh, somehow all the homology classes of the sphere, so which uh, all actually is non-zero just uh, uh, in the, for the second uh, degree. Okay, uh, and the proof of this, uh, following uh, the approach by Chang Lin, relies on computing the jumps uh, of the degree across uh, multiples uh, of uh, four pi. So in a sense, the analysis uh, by uh, Delpino, Musso, and Ruff uh, was telling you uh, where blow up uh, was occurring. And uh, so using uh, uh, some blow up analysis, uh, we show that uh, blow up must necessarily occur at the points uh, that they derived. And uh, uh, you can compute uh, somehow the contribution to the degree, the, to the degree of these uh, multibump uh, solutions. Okay, I just conclude with some uh, open problems. Let me start with the radial case in which this is the conjectured uh, picture. So exactly two solutions uh, uh, for lambda larger than four pi up to lambda sharp and exactly one solution uh, uh, on the left. So it would be nice to have uh, a proof uh, of, uh, of this conjecture for the, for the radial case. Uh, it would be also nice to prove uh, non-existence results for other general convex or contractible uh, domains. So when lambda gets uh, possibly large enough, uh, and also to prove uh, general multiplicity results. So um, we use the, say, one min-max scheme, but somehow the topology of all possible configuration of concentration points is very rich. So in principle, you should be able to use uh, multiple min-max uh, schemes at the same time, which would produce, uh, hopefully, uh, multiple critical points. So uh, there are only available results for global equations in uh, uh, generic cases, uh, so starting from uh, works by Francesca De Marquis, uh, but no really general uh, result. Um, it would be also interesting, uh, uh, to me at least, to try to recover the palace main condition. So we saw that uh, uh, it does not hold in general, but maybe if you impose some natural assumptions like uh, sort of Morse index bounds, which you can define uh, as done by Lyons and uh, Fang uh, uh, Gossub, maybe you, should, you might be able to recover the palace main condition. Uh, other problems are uh, uh, to study changing science solutions, which would be pretty hard. So there is a work in progress by uh, Martinazzi, TZ, and Betois, in which uh, apparently you can construct uh, sequences of solutions with negative peaks, but whose uh, weak limit this time is not identically zero. So this complicates things uh, uh, quite a lot. And uh, uh, say for Lu uh, I go very quickly here, and I just mentioned some results. So for Louisville equations and uh, lane and uh, equations, so which are of power types, maybe with very large uh, exponents, you still obtain uh, uh, the above bubbles I talked about as, as profiles, but uh, they can be also modeled uh, on uh, conical points. So maybe you get two different profiles for uh, positive peaks uh, and the negative uh, peaks. So that's uh, actually quite interesting. So I mentioned some results by Oshuta Suzuki, Grossi, Grumiao, Piacella, De Marquez, Yanni, Pacella, Pistoia, Ricciardi, and Yevika, Wei, Yang. And also it would be interesting to study the case of unbounded domains, especially in non-coercive uh, regimes. 
So for such domains, say a bundle like R2, for example, uh, there are some more integer type inequalities with tail terms. Huh? So, uh, so you don't get uh, trouble with the integration uh, of the exponential function. So you subtract uh, some terms in the Taylor expansion of the exponential. And uh, in some cases, uh, there is a study of uh, extremals. So there are works by Ruff, uh, Battaglia Mancini, Cassani, Sani, Tarsi, Ibrahim, Masmoudi, Nakanishi, Lu Zhu. Uh, but not so much study, as far as I know, about supercritical uh, regimes. So I stop here and uh, thank you for the attention.